Hey guys, it's Carissa here, and welcome to my YouTube channel, uh, Iggy Fairy Designs. It's Saturday, so that means it's Stamp Stash Saturday, which is where I go into my Stamp Stash and pick out a stamp that I've never used before and put it on a card. So today I uh, decided to use some of my Stampin' Bella, or one of my Stampin' Bella stamps. I've had this for a while, and it's the Honey Bear Stuffies. It's so cute, and I got it because, I don't know, it's just super sweet. It reminds me of, like, um, storybook kind of vintage, just cute, cute, cute characters. And the sentiment says, a day without a friend is like a pot without a single drop of honey left inside. And that's by Winnie the Pooh. I also wanted to try out this new Extreme Black stamp or inking pad by My Favorite Things. It's a hybrid ink pad. It says it's compatible with alcohol markers, but it also says on the back that it's fast drying and waterproof on paper surfaces. So I decided I would try that today. And I'm also trying out something new, the Distress Watercolor Paper cardstock. It's not new. It's new to me. I've never used it before. Um, but I wanted to try it because I know a lot of my friends use it because it's um, actually a bright white watercolor paper. And so I picked some up when it was on sale at Hobby Lobby and decided to pull it out for today. I went ahead and already stamped my image on there with that Extreme Black um, ink. And I am using my Daniel Smith watercolors today. These are the Primatec watercolors. It's all of their like genuine watercolors. I have them all together in this separate palette. And I thought it would be fun to use those today. I haven't used my Daniel Smith in a while. And um, a little bit about um, the Primatecs, I'll tell you in a, a bit. But I wanted to show you, I always have my water, two jars of water when I'm watercoloring and a paper towel on hand. I'm also using my silver black velvet brushes, like always. Um, I do have some other watercolor brushes, but I tend to always reach for these. So I'm doing, uh, for the coloring the images, I'm doing a dry uh, watercoloring, which is I am basically adding the color to my images when the paper is dry and then adding some water to spread it out to the rest of my image. I'm also um, leaving a little bit of white space. Uh, like I told you, I think in previous videos I like to do, I like to leave a little bit of white space, kind of give that natural highlight, uh, give it a nice soft wash to begin with, and then I can come in and deepen up shadows where I want to once that layer is dry and do that. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the Daniel Smith watercolors that I'm using today because, um, like I mentioned, they're all the genuine watercolors, which is from their Primatech line, and um, I'm obsessed with these. They were probably the first Daniel Smith watercolors that I got that I really, really loved. This is the only one here off to the side that isn't part of the Primatech collection because I needed like an orangey kind of yellow color and I didn't really have that in my palette and I wanted to use that for the honey pot or the honey um not the honey pot but the um the honeycomb or whatever wherever the bees live <laughs> Um, anyway, um, from Daniel Smith's website, the Primatech watercolors are made from minerals, often semi-precious minerals, that have been ground into pigments, mixed with gum arabac, which is the binder, and then milled into Primatech watercolors. So they started doing this in 1998, and most of them will end with genuine. And that's how you can know that it's part of the Primatech watercolors. So like Lapis Lazuli Genuine, and there's Amethyst Genuine, and there's Serpentine Genuine, which is a green um, that I do use in this in this one. But what I really love about these watercolors is that they um, granulate beautifully. And it's just, it, it really is, like on the website it says most artists call it magical, and it really is magical. Um, you can get some really great uh, gradients of color and without even really trying so it just I don't know it just makes watercoloring so much easier so you can see I do pull out my heat tool to um, dry layers if I am ready to move on to something um, next to a layer that I was just working on and I want to dry it before I go and lay any color or water next to it like the honey pot this is actually the honey pot 
and um, my bears were a little bit wet so I wanted to make sure those were dry before I started dropping in any water or color on there so it didn't go into the bear and so you can see that I use a little bit of that same color on their paws kind of where it would be pink and um, now I'm coming in and adding a little bit more shading onto my bears just to give them a little bit more depth and dimension I also wanted to mention, um, you can see that I am like testing out colors on a scrap piece of watercolor paper and that's because I have yet to create a swatch um, for this palette. So I don't know what the colors are. Um, a, you know, a lot of times when they're in the pans, they look totally different than what they're going to look like you know on paper when you spread out the color some of them I might have thought they were a brown when they were a red or whatever so I just wanted to test them on that little scratch piece of paper before I brought it onto my image kind of let me know what color I was actually bringing in you know the greens I kind of knew those were greens but was it a dark green was it a bright green you know was it the green that I really wanted to use so um, that's what that is all about. Uh, eventually I will get my swatches done for all of these and that's actually why I haven't used my Daniel Smith in a long time is because I, I kind of switched my palettes around. I got some new Daniel Smiths and I'm trying to figure out where I want to put them all and um, once I do that and get the swatches I'll probably use them more because I really do love my Daniel Smith watercolors. I love, I kind of just love all watercolors, but Daniel Smiths are just really fun to play with and color with. I am using, um, like I mentioned, the silver black velvet brushes, but I'm using a two and a four for the image, and then I'll come in with a six to do the background. But that two I use mostly, I think I brought in the four just a little bit on the honey pot and the bears, but for the most part, I'm using the two round because it's a really detailed image. It's small, and um, that's just, it really worked more to my advantage to bring in the smaller brush. So now I'm just adding a little bit more details to the honey pot, and I added a little bit more um, detail to um, the hive. That's what it's called, the hive. <laughs> That's where the bees live, right? That's where they make the honey. Oh my goodness. It's like, um, let me tell you, it's quarter to two in the morning when I'm doing this. So yeah, sometimes I don't remember things. But um, I'm going in here with the background and for the background I like to do a wet on wet because I just like that color to move on its own go where it's gonna go and just really be loose and effortless and so I will just add some water all around where I you know where I'm gonna want to add some color and then I'll drop in uh, bits of the pigment from my watercolors and it's funny because I just told you I don't have a swatch for this and I thought I was bringing in a blue and and as soon as I put that first drop onto my page it was a purple which I love that color purple but I was really wanting a blue sky so I just kind of alternated with the blue and the purple and it's kind of like a moodier sky uh, maybe they're stormy and they're trying to get some honey uh, before the storm uh, but yeah it was I wasn't really going to use the purple but I like it it turned out all right so I dried that all up I did add a couple drops of green just to tie that grass in and then I'm taking my white jelly roll pen and adding a bit of highlights to the nose and adding um, white back to the wings on the bees because I kind of got sloppy with my background and I wanted those to be nice and white. Um, all I did was die cut my panel with a My Favorite Things Dynamics die. It's the wonky rectangles. It's my favorite right now. I'm using it a lot so I hope you guys don't get bored with it but for these watercolored background um, stamps, you know, I think that really is all that these cards need. So I put a little foam tape on the back, put it on a card base, um, just a um, craft card base. I stamped the sentiment and I'm showing you that I wish I would have either brought it up a little bit or took it down a little bit. It kind of stamped right where it should, like over the stamp. So a day is kind of a little bit hard to read but hey it's handmade and I did not want to make it all over again I think it's still legible um, to 
an extent. So here's a close up of all that watercoloring and everything. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That lets me know that you guys are enjoying this series. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. And Jessie is joining me again. I love that she's continuing to do this series with me. So I will have a link to her channel again here for you so you can hop over and see what she did this week. And if you guys join in, I'd love to see it. Just use hashtag stamp stash Saturday on Instagram and I will check out your work. So I'll be back on Monday with another Mixed Media Monday video. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you next time. Bye.